What's up everyone, Rob's here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I 3D CAD model this welding table. So at the end of the video, you'll be able to create something like this. And you'll be able to learn how to use the weldment features. So I'd like to give a shout out to Homestead Dynamics. Uh, I guess that's how you pronounce it. And this guy is actually the inspiration behind the um, 3D model of the welding table. I'm just showing you how I did it. Uh, I'm usually a guy that likes to cat everything out, make sure everything fits, and then and then start making my pieces. Now let's get into it, guys. Uh, so for this example, we're going to start out with a tabletop of 53 inches by 30. Um, this is uh, what we're going to use for this example. So to do that, uh, make sure you go up to your um, solid add-ins and make sure that sheet metal and weldments is turned on. So we are going to draw this on the top plane and we're going to use the center square feature and we're going to make this 30 tab by 53 and that looks good. Then we're going to use sheet metal and we're going to make, so our table is going to be about a quarter of an inch thick. Um, yours may vary. But quarter inch is probably the minimum thickness I would go with for a welding table. Okay. And let's make sure that it is going in the right direction. So I want this. Yep. Looks sounds good. Next, I'm going to want to draw a layout sketch. This is going to define where our legs are going to be. And each leg is going to be, as far as the tube size, is going to be at a three by two for this example. And we're going to do that for the remaining. So we're going to make this 42.5 <clears throat> and 22.5. This is where our legs are going to live and let's exit out and then next we're going to draw the legs and to do that I'm going to use a 3D sketch the line feature and select this guy here make sure you snap it in place and it adds the along the Y constraint make sure you do that three more times for the other legs snap right there then we're going to select all four legs and make that equal then we're going to also grab this sketch and convert entities we want that also in the sketch now I want to make the legs 29 inches and your legs may vary depending on height most tabletops our, our work benches are about 36 inches in total height. So when you add the casters, the leg, and the table, this table here is going to be around 36 to 37. Um, if you're shorter, yours may vary. You may want to shrink this down to 26 or so. If you're taller, maybe go a little, a little taller on that, maybe 31 or 32. So it's personal preference. Okay. Now that we got that out of the way, we're going to add our cross supports. And we want to make sure that we're going in the right direction. So I'll hit tab. And that's going to make sure that we shoot it in the right direction. Because let's say I didn't do that and I hit, let's say, this, you can see it puts that somewhere else. And we don't want that. We want that on the cross uh, face there. So we'll delete that. Grab it. Select that point. Hit tab. We want to go around, along the ZX. Snap that in place. And we want to make this 15 inches. Okay. And we're going to add our lower frame piece now. Snap that in place. Make sure it's 
gives you the along the x direction and then we're going to do this just create this all the way across snap it in place there so you don't have to use 3d sketch you can use a bunch of planes and draw it that way but um i like to just do it this way so i can just kind of see it in space um that's just personal preference okay now we're going to make this two and a half okay it's fully defined and i like that now we're going to add our weldment profile files and in order to do that you're gonna select weldment structural member and you can go to ANSI and just it's in the stock location um you can go to like rectangular tube and find the tube unfortunately um, they don't have my size tube so i have to make a custom weldment profile um, i'm looking for a three by two by six or uh, by 14 gauge which is by 0 0.083 not 316 so they only have 316 and 0.25 so for now we're just going to select the 0.875 thickness and just do that for now um, what we want to do is we want to steal the sketch here hit control c if i open new part top plane just like they don't sketch on it and then hit control v and that actually will drop the sketch into place and we're going to edit that so we want three by two which is good and we want this to be uh 14 gauge so that is going to be 0 0.803 and then we want to make sure that the inner radius matches the thickness so do that equals boom and this is our first tube profile um there's quite a few more that make up this welding table so i'm going to do that all now um so that we can just get that out of the way okay and then now i'm gonna act before, before i exit out of this i'm gonna actually go to custom properties and i'm gonna give it a description so this is a, a rectangular tube so i'm gonna give this a uh, description of tr so tube rectangular three by two by 0 0.0883 and we're gonna call that 14 14 gauge parentheses and hit okay and exit out and I'm going to select the sketch and hit save as and then I'm going to get, scroll down to library feature part save it as the library feature part onto a desktop and we're going to give this a file name of T TR 3 by 2 by 0 0.083 14 and we'll save that to the desktop. So I'm gonna make all the different profiles. I'll put a list of what profiles we need. So we'll just run through this real quick. Okay, so now that we have all our profiles made, we're gonna put them in their respective folders. So I'm gonna name this one uh, rectangular. Or just rectangular tube. And this one's going to be square tube. Okay. Just drop those in their folders. And then you're going to go, um, I like to save the weldment profi profiles in the same place as where the SolidWorks stock weldments are. So to do that, go to your C drive. And I believe it is in program files, SolidWorks Corp, SolidWorks lang english and weldment profiles and already i already have a a folder i call it custom and then i and then you're what you're going to do is you're going to drop and drag the respective folders into their spots okay and then you'll see you'll have your profile profiles here okay this way you don't have to add a new file location document. Um, you can if you want, but I just like to keep it all in one place. So if you look at the stock ones are all there 
and I just label this custom. Okay, cool. Let's jump back into SolidWorks and let's delete this guy because we don't want that. And now let's go back to structural member and go down to custom. And now you go to two rectangular and this is going to be a three by two by 14 gauge. Select the leg. Right now it's the orientation is in the wrong setup. So to fix that, go down, you want, we want to flip this to 90. And then we want to hit locate profile and then we want to hit this virtual node. That's going to push it where we want it. And then you're going to do it three more times. 90, okay, profile, okay, new group, okay, looks good, hit okay, and there you go, it's starting to look like a table now. Now we're going to add our other two profiles here and the other ones are going to be three by or I'm sorry the other profile is going to be two by one point five by 14 gauge so select that and make sure that we are in there yep I actually want to push that down so hit, hit this virtual node it's going to live there new profile locate that push it in that corner then new group okay profile yes yeah, like that guy and we're gonna do this guy okay I like that bottom piece and that's also gonna apply to the top Okay, and we're gonna push that out. So it's right now protruding out. So we want this this node there. So let's delete that real quick. Hit new group. Locate profile. And hit that guy. New group. Locate profile. And this node there, Oop, hit F to go back to the model. A few zoomed out and last group, locate profile and it's going to be this guy. Okay. And hit OK. I think we're good. You can see now these are cutting in. No problem, we'll fix that. We'll go to ex trim extend. Make sure you have the end, end trim corner type selected and select the bodies that you want to trim. So select all these. Okay. And then you want to make sure that you have the turning trimming boundaries as body selected. And these are going to be our trimming boundaries with the four legs because they're retreating into it. So we want to, oop. No one, don't forget this guy there. Cool. You can kind of see a preview that it is trimming where we want it. Okay. That okay. Okay. Now we want to make these inside pieces a uh, two by one by 16 gauge. So let's go back to structural member and two by one, 16. Select that guy. And you see it's sticking out. We don't want that. So locate profile and we're gonna select this middle node. That's gonna push it down where we want. New group. Oh, forgot to add the 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 um cross so I forgot to add the cross supports down here, no problem. Let's go back to the 3D sketch and add that. Hit tab, make sure we're going along the ZX. 
snaps in place. Select. And we'll draw the other one. Okay. And you just make sure the constraints are there. If not, you can apply them. 15. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, now let's go back to the profile and add a new group to add these in. Locate profile, and we'll push that down as well. Boom, looks good. Okay, starting to look like a table now. All right, so now we can just hide these sketches and you're wondering well mine doesn't look orange it looks gray so i just did it to make it orange to make it more visible so one tip is you can go to options colors scroll down to sketch inactive and hit edit the color so whatever color is more visible for you to see i just chose orange so that's a quick little tip there all right, we can hide that sketch there. Don't forget to save now. So file, save as, and we'll just type this as new folder, welding table tutorial project or something. And we'll type this as welding table master. Okay. And we'll just make sure it's in the right orientation. So front view, cool, looks good. Looks like a table now. All right, so now we're gonna do the slide out arms and it's gonna live here. So select this face, hit sketch. Um, it's gonna just draw a line, make sure it has a horizontal constraint already. Then, grab that face and make this coincidence that's where the tubes gonna end okay and then we're gonna add a mirror construction line because we're gonna mirror the top and the bottom or top to the bottom so we'll select this this guy okay okay and I found that making this 17 and three fourths is a good outline. Um, the reason may vary how far your, uh, the slide art, this, yours may vary on how the slide, yours may vary on how the slide arms uh, distance is. So you can adjust this according to your preferences, but I found 17.75 is good, especially if you want to add like a chop saw on top or a plasma uh, cutting table type deal so cool hit ok and these are going to be square tubing so this is going to be a tube that goes within a tube so this outside tube is going to be one and a half by one and a half by 12 gauge um, so make sure we go to tube square one and a half by one and a half by 12 gauge yep boom just like that guy and make sure that our new group is shifted down because right now it's going into the part. It's just like this. Oop. Why doesn't okay? Make sure it's that. Hit locate profile. Okay, there it is. Okay. Let's hide that sketch. Cool. You can kind of see how it's coming together now. So now we're gonna add the inner tube. So let's make a reference plane. It's like these two faces. It's gonna create our midpoint plane. And we're gonna use that plane to sketch our, our segment or our line for the slide out pieces. Okay. And I wanna make sure that this line's in the center. So one way to do that is hit this phase, hit convert entities, um, make that construction, add a node, select the midpoint, and it should snap in, select that, 
line and make that coincidence. Cool. And we want to make sure that this line is also in the center. So grab that, make that center. Cool. Okay, so we know I want this to be 61 inches based off what I modeled earlier. And then I want to add the, I want to mirror that to the other side. And you don't have to mirror across a construction line. As you can see, I don't have one. You can also do it across a plane. So here, I'm going to use the front plane. Hit OK. And I'm going to add my slide arm handles on one side. And let's make sure that is in the center as well. So select that phase. Make this construction. Add a horizontal. Okay, and I know that this is going to extend to the edge, so make that coincident. Okay, and then we're going to mirror that onto the other side. And, so, yeah. and we'll just use this construction line since we already have it. Okay, and this inner tube is going to be uh, one and a quarter by one and a quarter by 14 gauge, I believe. All right, let's exit out of that. Structural member, one and a quarter. Cool. And we're at a new group. Locate profile. And we're going to grab this. Yep, looks good. And we're going to add it to the other side as well. So now we're going to want to split the pull out arms because right now it's one solid piece. So in order to do that, we're going to go to file, insert, features, split, and we're going to use the right plane as our split tool. And we're going to select these two bodies, hit cut bodies, select all four and hit okay. And if you look at it, it is split. So now we can pull this to the left and to the right. And I'll show you exactly how this is going to look like in a model I did earlier. Go into animate the explode. So kind of see how that's looking like. So this is closed. This is open. And yeah, and we're going to animate a collapse. So this is how it's going to close. Yep, so that's going to be like the the outcome. So I just want to kind of show you a sneak peek of how that looks like. Okay. So now we are going to add our top piece. So we're going to confer entities on these edges. Okay. And then we're gonna, this is going to be a two by one by 16 gauge, I believe. Square tube. Two by one by 16. Yep. New group. Flip this 90. And select this node. So it's going to live right there. New group. Flip this guy 90. And it's going to live right there. Okay. Cool. It's starting to look like a table with all the additional features now. Pretty cool. All right. Now we're going to, so these, these slide out to the left and to the right. And I'm actually going to make one that slides forward because I want, if I'm working on a really large project, I want to have that flexibility. So. Um, so to do that, we're going to add this also, this top profile. Convert entities. Okay. Exit out. And then we're going to also make that a two, two by one. But we're going to shift the profile 
down like that and actually locate profile we actually want to have this this node there there you go that's what we want okay and I'm going to repeat the steps um, like I did with the tube that goes within the other tube on the side piece. I'm just going to do that for the front slide out. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. There you have it. So we have those, the front and the left and right slide outs already complete. Now we're going to add uh, the bolt hole locations for this guy. This is going to be, we're going to use half inch bolts, so I'll just make this half inch. And we're going to add a, a midpoint kind of constraint. And you see how I like to do that. I like to make a construction line at a vertical constraint or a horizontal constraint to a midpoint. Uh, that's kind of how I like to do it. And same thing here. Then this is Virgo, and that's how I locate it. And we'll just do the same. Make this half inch. And grab that, hover over, you see the midpoints like that. Grab that, hit that vertical, now it's in that mid center of that piece. And Connect to that guy and hit the vertical. Cool. Well, that's constraint, and we'll mirror that to the other side. So mirror about the right plane, um, and you can just select this whole thing. Okay, and you should have it on the other side. Cool. Then we're gonna extrude cut, extrude cut. Um, go through all and then unselect auto select and you're going to select these four bodies cool now you can see it cut it all the way through so these are going to allow the half inch wall on bolts to be adjusted and you'll be able to locate it there so cool hit control s to save it and next here we're going to add the mounting feet for the casters. Uh, I decided to go with 16 by, or not 16. Now we're going to add the feet for the casters or the mounting plates. And I decided to go with six by two casters, um, poly casters. They're rated about a thousand pounds per caster. And you can either use all, um, you can either use two rigid and two swivels. I'm going to probably end up going with two rigid and two swivel with locks so I can move this around and lock it in place. But I found six and a half to be a good size. You can go with five inch casters as well, but six by two casters will work fine. And to get that profile, I'm going to, and I'm going to bolt these on so that um, you can weld them or bolt them on, but I'm going to, I'm going to bolt these on. So I'm going to create the mounting plate now. So good place to look for casters is McMaster. So got six inch diameter casters. Um, here's the part number that I decided to go with. And I'm gonna steal this drawing or this model and create my plate from it. So drop that in there. In order to do that, grab its face, hit convert entities, select inner loops. Hit OK, and then convert entities and select the whole face. And that will give you uh, the profile sketch that we need. So we're going to grab our sketch, hit Control C to copy it, and then go back to our welding table. Select the bottom face and hit Sketch, and hit Control V, and that's going to copy our sketch and now you can see none of this is defined if I move it around it's going to mess it all up so to cheat a little bit I'm going to select the whole thing and make this a block and hit OK now it now I can move this wherever I want and then I'm gonna, to locate this guy I'm going to go 
draw my across centerpiece with a node in the middle. And then I'm going to do a cross diagonal piece, snap that in place, and then take this guy and locate. And that's how I'm going to locate and constrain this block sketch. Cool. Exit out. Go to sheet metal. And I'm going to make this. Before I do that, select the sketch. Go to base flange. And I'm going to make this guy 316. I think that's a good thickness to go with. You can go with coder if you want, but 316 is adequate. And it's going into the face. Don't want to do that. Hit reverse. Boom. Okay. Okay, now I got one feet. And now we can just use the mirror feature to mirror um, the feet plate. Make sure you go to bodies to mirror, not features. And hit OK. And mirror. Oops. And we're going to mirror this in front plane. And we're going to do the two feet that were created. There you go. And I will add the casters um, in the assembly model. Um, this is the part file. You can do it into, into the uh, part file, but um, for, for my preferences, I'm going to add it to the assembly. So now we have our feet. Very good. So you don't necessarily have to do this. You can just make a plate without, without the whole cutouts and just weld on the casters. Um, it's totally optional. I just did it this way just in case one feet went bad or something, I can remove it and replace it. Um, or So that's just personal preference. Okay, so next we are going to add the slide out trays and to give you an example or preview how it's going to look like, it's going to be these guys right here. Uh, we're going to, just totally optional, you don't necessarily need to do it, but I think it adds some pretty cool features to your welding table. So this um, storage is going to be 17 by 7. Okay. And let's exit out. And then we're going to add the weldment profile. So let's go structural member. So these are going to be 3 by 1 by 16 gauge. So let's find that 3 by 1 by 16. And we'll select the faces. And I want it, this to be on the inside, so let's see how that looks like when I select this guy. Okay, there it is. And you can see it, it automatically mitered the joints. That's what we want. Okay, and now we're going to add the, so if I look at it from the front, um, we're going to add the perforated sheet as our base. So the perforated sheet is going to be 16 gauge and it is going to extend halfway. So this dimension is actually, let's see, 16 by I believe it's going to be 6. Yep. Okay. And then we're going to hit sheet metal, base tab, and we're going to make this guy 16 gauge, which is 0.06. It's going into the surface, so let's hit reverse, hit OK, and to add the perforated holes. Uh, one instead of making a bunch of holes and doing a bunch of linear patterns, I'm going to cheat a little bit. So let's go to isolate, select this guy, hit isolate, select this, and then now you want to go to features, and we're going to do the fill pattern. And we're going to do a seed cut. So our Boundary is going to be this face, and we're going to be 0 0.06875 as far as our hole to hole. Create a seed cut, and our hole is going to be about half inch. And select the bodies. You just want the flange only. And 
hit OK. And now we have our perforated sheet and we'll be able to weld on the outside. And that is it. We'll call this guy desktop. We'll call this slide or swing out, maybe swing out tray, tray box. Sure. So now we're going to need to add a hinge and everything to assembly. So let's go into the assembly mode real quick, just to kind of piece this guy together. So let's grab assembly, insert our holding table master. Okay. Hit. Okay. It locks it in place. And now we're going to add our slide out tray. And then we're going to float this and grab it. And that's going to live somewhere out here. And we're going to add a hinge to that. So another cool place is to go back to McMaster and look at hinges. So type hinges and we're going to do a butt hinge with, without holes. And we know our piece is three inches tall. So we're going to go three inches. Cool in height. And I want my piece to be because it's arms. I want it to be pretty beefy. So I'm going to grab um, this guy. The, when I install it, I actually want it to like swing in order to do that. We're going to make this all individual pieces with configurations. So if you haven't used configurations, uh, it's a cool way to learn. So we're going to make an assembly. We're going to have one, two, and three pieces. So in order to do that, I'm going to add configuration. I'll just lay hinge plate one. Hinge plate two. and pin. Okay. So I want to delete. I actually want to just keep the pin and delete. And I want to make sure this guy is only applied to the pin. So we'll suppress it there, suppress it there and apply. Cool. So if I go back to that, it's only applied to the pin. Okay. So now I want to also do the same thing, but I want to use this, keep this plate and make sure that my configuration feature is only working for this. So we'll suppress it in one. Two, three. Yep, cool. So we only want the hinge plate to unselect and everything else suppressed. Okay, and then we can go to hinge plate one, delete body. So this is a body delete. It's like the other face. And configure features, suppress. suppress. Cool. So now we have it only um, applied to the hinge plate one. Hit apply. Okay. Cool. So now we have our individual pieces and we'll create an assembly from that. So I'm going to hit save. Sure. And we're going to bring each sketch insert. And then I'm going to this configuration is going to be plate one. Okay. And I'm going to take this guy, copy it, and paste it two more times. And then this is going to be plate two. And this is going to be the pin itself. 
Okay. So let's make this call centric. Okay. And now we're going to give it a with mate. Just like this face. And this face and the other face. So if you don't use don't know how to use the width feature or width uh, with constraint, um, figure it out. It's it's pretty useful feature to use. Now we're gonna add our oops. Now we're gonna add a cocentric constraint to the pin. And we're going to make this face coincidence to this face. Okay. Okay, now we have our hinge. And we're going to bring this guy out. Okay. And we're going to hide some of these sketches. So I'll just go hide um, sketches. See, now you have a, and the reason why I made it separate pieces is because I wanted my hinge to move freely, like so. So, this is going to move freely. So, I'm going to select this face, make this concentric to this face, and make this, make sure I have that right. Swing it out. Yep. This face. And this face with this face. And I think that looks good. I think that looks right. I may have my hinges wrong, but you get the you get you guys get the idea. So let's make this perpendicular. Okay. I will give this a Yeah, looks good. Cool. So that's our swing out arm and we can just mirror this whole thing onto the other side and you can kind of figure out where you where you want this to live um but we'll adjust that down the road and then we're gonna mirror these components make sure that it's doing what we want Yep. Cool. And now we have our swing out trays. All right. And we'll save this assembly as welding table assembly. Save it in the same project folder. Okay. And it's starting to look like a table now. So the next step is um, this is totally optional is to add whole call outs or whole cutouts on the top and this is so that you can use this to clamp down um, uh, and clamp down certain things and um, and I'll show you an example in a minute but but let's create these whole cutouts first um, totally optional uh, if you want it um, I'd probably recommend it if you want to use clamps to, to clamp down a jig or something like that, or to make a jig or something. So to do that, let's go back to the welding table master part. Uh, select the face, hit sketch, and then go down to the view drop down and hit hidden lines visible. Okay, so now I want to make our whole cutouts. And I want to make sure that it doesn't interfere with any of the um, structural two pieces. 
So I found out a good dimension to go with is two, five, and I'm gonna make these guys three eighths. Um, you can go with the half, but three eighths is good. So this, uh, when you get your tabletop, you can have these either drilled out um, if you wanna drill them out by hand. Or if you want to be more accurate, you should probably get these laser cut out, CNC laser cut, if you have that option. I'm um, not sure what the cost is, but um, look into it. And when I build this table, I'm probably going to just um, use my drill press to drill all these holes, and I'll show you a cool way that I did it. Okay. And I'm going to make these three eights. Okay. <laughs> Let's make this okay, and I think that looks good. Actually, let's make this five inches. Okay. So like I said, um, this is totally optional. You can skip this step if you are not planning on drilling out any holes. Okay, I think that looks good. I think I have one hole here as well. Okay, extrude cut. And we'll just do a linear pattern that way. Cool. And now we're going to go linear pattern, the whole, the whole thing there. And we're going to go along the foot with that. Two, actually, three, four. And yep, that looks good. Cleared everything. Okay. And. We want it also on the other side. So one way to cheat is go into your surfaces feature. Go cut with surface and we're gonna select this body and we're gonna use our right plane because I'm too lazy to do it on the other side. Make sure you have the side you wanna cut off. So I'm gonna cut off the right. And then I'm going to go features, mirror, select this face, or face, I want to mirror is that face, bodies, select this, and then I want to merge those two bodies together. Okay, and if I look up top now, let's go top view, and 
let's look at the hidden lines and there you go i i clear everything and i don't run into any structural pieces so i'm not drilling in to the tube itself this is going to be our grid layout for our fixture so when we can, we can clamp our pieces down using these holes so now i'm going to constrain these guys real quick inches just like this face with this face so this is 20 inches a little bit too high so let's move that down to 19 inches okay i like that make sure let's go to our units make sure that's inches so that everything comes out inches okay and to make this face co-centric with this face okay and let's see what we got going on okay now I gotta constrain that face so let's constrain it like that and that's too close so let's make this two maybe nope that's too much 1.75 1.5 okay i think 1.5 looks good all right yep that looks good and just can move freely and it's not into the part all right so there are our swing out pieces here okay i like that so the next thing we want to do is we want to create a place for this these guys to stop at a structural piece that stops it. So I'm going to position this so where I can add the stops for it. Uh, so to do that, go down to use for position only. I make this piece parallel to this face. I can either build like some type of bracket l bracket or what i'm going to probably end up doing is make like a tube that comes down and then like a plate that gets welded to that tube so that um it locks into it see that and to do that i'm going to cheat and go and hit edit part and i'm able to edit the part while seeing the trays it's kind of helped me locate things so select this face hit sketch and then our two piece is going to come down like so make this point concentric probably gonna weld a two piece that goes there okay and our two piece can be pretty small so it can be it can go we can go with the two by one to keep it consistent so let's exit out of that so this would kind of give us a profile on our tube so let's make that midpoint make this construction and we know we're going to use a two by one so let's say that's two okay And I'm gonna make this piece because I want it to when I when this thing folds back, I want it just to hit this guy to rest again. So and so let's make this reference. Okay. And flip this 90. And we're gonna do it. It's gonna be a two by one by 16 gauge. And we're going to position this, locate profile, position this over, like so. Okay. And now we can add our plate and select that and make, make convert and then go to sheet metal and make this a flange. And I know my thickness is going to be 0.125. And direction one 
going to be up to surface. So I'm going to make this all the way here. Like so. And I want my bend radius to match the thickness. So 0.125. Or make it double 0.25. And there's going to be our piece. So when the tray closes, it slides, rides against that piece and clicks into place. And I'll probably end up adding some magnets in the back to make sure that it stays permanently or it stays um, and and has enough. Or I'll add, so I'll probably add magnetic pieces so that it stays better. And now we'll just mirror that. Mirror across the right plane. We'll mirror both bodies. Why is it not letting me select? That's weird. Okay. So you can kind of see how that's going to look like now. See, there you go. So it'll be able to slide and that will rub against it and then click into place. So the friction will hold it in place and then um, I'll add some magnets to the magnet strips to the back so, to, to keep it um, from shifting or coming out and not need it. So that's how that looks there. And now let's add the casters. So we have our, our two rigid and our two swivels, and I'll grab the swivels eventually. So let's constrain this guy. And let's go advance mate, let's go to width, and select this side, and this side. And this side. And also do the same thing. Do another width. And this side. Cool. All right. Starting to look like a table with wheels. Okay, let's hit save. And let's go add our rigid piece, or our, I'm sorry. Now let's go add our swivel caster. So let's go back to the McMaster. And so we have rigid, rigid rib brakes and swivel. So we'll grab this guy here, save it. And drop it down to our folder. And then open the folder and drab. And you can just drop it in like that. So we're going to do the same thing. And constrain that. And then I'm going to go advanced mates with and repeat the same steps. We'll do another width. Okay, there you go. You can see the holes line up now, and we can use some bolts to bolt those down together. So mirror components, and we're gonna use the front plane, I believe, and we'll select these components. Okay. Now we have our two rigid and our two swivels, six by two casters. And uh, you can 
call it good here, but we're gonna actually add the perforated sheet on the bottom. So let's grab this face here. And center rectangular sketch. And we're gonna just give just a dimension by, I believe this is gonna be 44 by 24. Yep, and this is gonna be our, our base sheet for the bottom. And we're gonna make this guy 16 gauge as well. So 0 0.06. And we're gonna make sure that it's going in the right direction. Yep, reverse it. And there we go, we have our pieces on the bottom. Okay, so now we added the Helmer table uh, into the model, um, totally optional, I just did it just so that it looks more visibly appealing and you kind of see where everything's gonna live. So the next thing we're gonna do now is we are going to add the uh, grinder holders. We're gonna make some bent um, bent plates that are gonna go, or bent. So we're gonna make some bent flat bar, which are gonna hold the grinders in place and any uh, clamps. So let's do that. So to do that, we're gonna add a plane and we're gonna say it is you know, 22 from the bottom. Actually, let's make that 19. Okay, and now that we have our plane, just hit edit sketch, and we are gonna add our bent profile. So it's gonna look something like this. Um, or you can just use a flat bar all the way across and just screw it down. That's one way. Or um, you can do this bent plate. It kicks it out a little bit further. So we'll, we'll just do that. So let's we'll constrain this. And we'll add in our constraints so you can kind of see where everything is. Make this midpoint. Oh, wrong one. Cool. And then we're gonna add some symmetry features. And I'm gonna make this one inch by one inch. And it's gonna come around somewhere around there. And we'll make this 24. See how that looks. And we're gonna make this touch this face. Like so. And let's bring it actually, let's make this 23. Okay. That looks good. Make sure everything's fully defined. So this is not. So let's make this equal. All right, everything's fully defined. I like that. So then we're gonna go to sheet metal and we're gonna use, we're gonna make this guy uh, 16th of an inch. So one sixteenth. And we're gonna make the bend radius, um, um, inner bend radius uh, 0.125. And the direction we're gonna do wine, and we're gonna make this piece half inch, because it's gonna be half inch flat bar being bent. And then we're gonna reverse the direction Oop. so that it's on the outside, like so. Okay, and that's where that's gonna live. Okay. And then we're also gonna do a Another bracket, which is going to hold hold your earplugs or your welding helmet, and we're going to make that guy live here. So, let's add a reference plane. Let's let this face, this face, and edit on sketch, and that guy is going to look something like like this. 
and and we're gonna make this guy co-planner. It's gonna look there. And this guy gonna be let's say two inches. And two inches and we're gonna put this guy out two inches maybe see how that guy looks first okay now we're gonna go to sheet metal make this guy same thing uh, make this guy half inch mid plane override 16th of an inch and same with the inner bend radius and make sure that it's not going into the table. Okay, I like that. Okay, and go round off these edges real quick. So let's round those edges off and just hover over to the pop up menu. And nope, we don't want that. So let's try it again. We want the corners. So, let's zoom out real quick. Let's hit clear. And there you go. That's what I want because I want to round off those corners. Give this a eighth of an inch radius. Same with the other guy. And yep, that's where that's gonna live. And we want it also on the left side, so we're gonna mirror it. Mirror it across the right plane. We're gonna do bodies. Okay, there we go. Let's put a little on that side there. And now we can hide these planes. Okay, so we can use some sheet metal screws to screw these in, or you can weld them in as well. Okay, so let's go back to this tabletop. Um, you can either weld this in after you, if you don't think you're ever gonna replace this top, or you don't ever think you're gonna do anything extra to the top, you can just weld it in place, or you can build flanges to temporarily hold it down. And um, I'm not gonna do that in this model, but um, you just you'll be making some L brackets that essentially keep this top plate to the to the frame, something like this. So the flanges, if you want to temporarily hold your table top down, these flanges will look something like this, where you'll have the L brackets here, here, and two tabs on the inside to hold it in. So these will are welded onto the top plate and then they're screwed in with some sheet metal screws. So that's uh, one option. Um, and now uh, what we're, we wanna do now is add some leveling feet and they're gonna look something like this. These are couplers. And the last thing we're gonna do is add some, I, I just got some round tube and we're gonna add um, some round tube to size to hold your welding gun. Um, you can do it on all four, or you can just do it on one side, um, up to you guys. And then some additional features or additional add-ons are these um, hitch receiver stop, hitch receiver um, tube with another tube. Um, I'll also model that also so that you guys can add that on. They can take it off your your table if you're not using it. So I'll, that's what I'm gonna do to my table is gonna, I'm gonna add these piece, pieces in. And when I'm not using it, I'll unscrew these two, slide this out and then just drop it down and store it on the bottom. So now your table should look something like this. Um, I added a bench vise, added a grinder, and you can see here, 
this is where uh, the grinders are going to live. They just um, rest against that flat bar that's that we bent. And here you can see we put our ear plugs there. And I actually have a uh, bench drill press. And so I made this enough, this tall enough to tuck this guy underneath when I'm not using it. And here are some clamps that clamp onto the other end. And you have your couplers here that are are used with half inch bolts to adjust up and down for any uneven surfaces. And then here you can see I bolted these guys down. Um, you can see it's I left one out because it's very difficult to get a bolt through there based off of how low I have this lower frame. But if you have this higher, obviously you can fit another bolt, but I left it, I, I made sure that I needed enough height so that my drill press fit it underneath. And then you have your Helmer drawer. It, um, you cut half, about five inches off the bottom to make this work and add a uh, 16 or 16 gauge um, sheet to give it a base. Then you have your slide out arms, kind of like here. So, and this is going to be able so that you can use um, larger parts that you can place on the table. You can add your chop saw here. And then I used uh, some, I just modeled some flanges in because I may not, I may be changing the table out top down the road or in the future. I don't want to have this permit welded. So I just use some bent flanges and some sheet metal screws to keep them in. Same with the bent tabs here. I just use some sheet metal screws to keep those in temporarily, just in case I wanted to change something out. And then I have my weld holder pieces here. And I have the half inch nuts um, here to adjust this piece up or down. And I have castle nuts, I think it's a castle nuts or wing nuts, I'm sorry. Wing nuts to uh, adjust this up and down um, easily by hand. Um, and that is it. So give it a try. And if you guys have any questions, just leave them in the comment section below. And if you guys haven't already, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. And see you guys in the next one. Later.